here then get method where in the get method you by just looking at the url you can find out what data is being transmitted next you have another filter called frame contains post frame contains post so once again let me do a google search or oh sorry a filter on it not google search so frame contains post it is showing me an error surprisingly well never mind we have already seen one filter that allowed you to get post there is another one that allows you to filter only those data packets that represent get methods and the filter is http dot request dot method equal to equal to get http dot request dot method equal to equal to get so i copy that and i paste it into this filter of wireshark press enter and now if you notice on the screen only those data packets that are representing get methods have been displayed on the screen similarly you have another filter which is frame contains get frame contains get so i copy that paste it into this filter field in wireshark and it has um, filter out filter out all the different uh, data packets that represent get methods and typically we have already seen this earlier there should be get method header in a data sniffer in wireshark you can just by reading the uh, text you can figure out what data was being transmitted so this brings us to a very interesting attack called query string tampering so if using a data sniffer if you are able to find out that your friend or your colleague in your company has visited a website where some query strings were used and specifically the get method was used to transmit data you could actually just copy that url change the fields that you want and press enter in your browser and that new modified url will get executed lot of website will transmit the price of a ticket or the price of a hotel reservation in a get method as well so you could all actually say if you're booking a hotel for 10000 rupees a night if you change it in the get method you can actually get the same reservation for say 5000 rupees a night so a secure website will use the post method to transmit the price they may use the get method to transmit the name of the hotel or the city because that won't cause any damage so query string tampering attacks are attacks where the criminal manipulates the query string parameters being passed between the user and the website via the get method for example in the below url you can change the source city destination city date number of passengers and other details by just changing the url i have given a demonstration of this for the clear trip website but in this uh, screen you can see that a similar thing can be done with the jet airways website as well similarly there is another attack called hidden input field attack normally data values are passed between the user and website through the get method or the post method or sometimes cookies however sometimes some website will send some important piece of information to a user in the form of a hidden input field passed within the html page itself the value in the hidden input field is that uh, you could transmit data back and forth through just the html code of that page without using get or post method so imagine if you look at this example the price of something that you are buying online is being transmitted through a hidden html input file or a in input uh, field rather so if some website is using that which nowadays most websites do not use this you could modify the value so right now the price is 2000 rupees you could change it to 500 rupees and you can fool the website into thinking that you need to pay only 500 rupees 
Now, there's another tool which I like to quickly tell you about. Name of the software is Live HTTP Headers. Live HTTP Headers is basically a software that allows you to look at the HTTP headers of every single website that you're visiting. It's great for uh, just HTTP fingerprinting or just to understand how the HTTP uh, protocol works and what are the different uh, methods that are available and how each method works. You can download this browser app. It's called Live HTTP Headers. It is currently available only for Mozilla Firefox browser, but it, it is a fabulous software. So with that, we come to the end of query string attacks. And we still have around 40, 45 minutes left, maybe 30, 35 minutes left in today's lecture. So let me go ahead and quickly start the final topic of today's lecture, which hopefully I'm able to finish today itself. Otherwise, I'll continue it in the next lecture. It's called How to Steal Somebody Else's Cookies to Hijack Their Online Connection. So, cookie uh, stealing and session hijacking is the topic or the last topic of today's lecture. So, what exactly are cookies? I'm sure that all of you would have heard about cookies at various points in, in your life while you're surfing the internet or just reading various tech magazines or reading the newspaper and so on. So, what exactly are cookies? A cookie is basically a text file that is created by a website, sent to a user's computer, and it is stored on the user's computer so that the website can identify who the user is. Typically, a cookie will contain some important information about the user, like maybe the username password of the victim or the user, maybe some color preferences or maybe a modified or customized the background of a website that information could be stored in a cookie. Or maybe the cookie contains some temporary information. Like if you're shopping something online or buying something online, then the shopping cart information or the items that you have added to the shopping cart could be temporarily stored in, in the form of a cookie file on your computer. So some misconceptions about cookies also exist. Cookies are not viruses. They're not harmful to your computer. And one website cannot read a cookie that has been created and stored on your machine by another website. However, cookies can actually be misused for tracking a user's activity or to hijack a user's account by stealing their cookie. Now, a simple example of a cookie is whenever you visit, say, google.com, there are two things that happen. First of all, if you have a Gmail account, and if you have logged into a Gmail account in the past, Gmail would have created a cookie on your computer. And now if whenever you go to Google, if you look at the right top corner of the screen, I am automatically logged into my Gmail account. How did that happen? Using cookies. If you look at the left bottom corner of the screen, there is a link which says, change background image. So, using this link, it is possible for you to customize the background image of google.com to something else of your choice. So, now when you connect to Google, the next time you connect to Google, how does Google remember what background do you like or what background you have chosen? It remembers that by setting a cookie on your computer. So, let me quickly give you a real life example or a demo of a cookie. So if I open my browser, if I just type facebook.com, let's see what happens. I'm automatically logged into my Facebook account. How did that happen? That happened because the last time I logged into Facebook, I had enabled the option which says remember me. So next time I come to Facebook, I don't need to enter my username and password again. Or if I type, say, google.com, if you look at the screen, right top corner of the screen, I am automatically logged in to my Gmail account. I'll just zoom out. So my photograph, my name shows that I'm automatically logged into my Gmail account. So that is, again, happening because of cookies. 
Now, if I didn't want Google to be able to read my cookies, what do I do? I need to open something known as a private browsing window or an incognito window. Incognito window. So, when I open up incognito window, it will hide or it will uh, not allow any website to visit or access any of my cookies. So, now if I go to facebook.com, it is asking me for my username and password. Why? Because Facebook was not able to access the cookies on my machine because uh, I am visiting facebook.com using a private browsing window or an in incognito window. Similarly, if I go to google.com, it is no longer able to log me into my Gmail account automatically. So, my name and my photograph is no longer getting displayed on the right hand side top corner and in fact, it is instead displaying the sign in button uh, because it was not able to access my cookies. So, where are cookies stored in your browser? See, every browser stores cookies in a special folder or location. So, typically you need to go into the settings of your browser. So, I click on this settings button and then click on this settings link. And if I scroll down, click on advanced and then click on content settings and it will allow me to view all the cookies uh, stored on my machine. It will also allow me to change the settings of the of how cookies are used by my browser. If I click on this button which says all cookies and site data, then all the cookies stored by all the websites in my browser on my computer get displayed. So, it's still kind of searching all the different cookies that are there. So, it takes a minute or so for it to display the entire list. So, now if all of you look at the screen, the entire list of various uh, cookies that have been created and stored on my computer have been displayed. So, say for example, yatra.com stored these cookies. So, if I want to get rid of these cookies, I can actually uh, click on this cross button and it will help me delete the cookie. So, yab.com, yatra.com and so on. So, you can delete cookies, you, you have access or control over how websites interact with cookies in your browser by just going to the settings of your browser. Now, there are different types of cookies and there are actually four main types of cookies, but then for the purpose of this course, we are going to focus on only the first two types, which is the session cookie and a persistent cookie. A session cookie is a cookie that only lasts for a particular internet session. So, if you shut down your browser, then the cookie will automatically get deleted. So, a session cookie only lasts for a in, for an internet session or a, for a session of a browser. The moment you shut down your browser, the session cookie gets deleted. On the other hand, a persistent cookie will last for multiple sessions. So, even if you close your browser, even if you shut down your machine, even if you restart your machine, the persistent cookie will remain on your computer. And to remove a persistent cookie, either you need to manually delete the cookie like I had shown you earlier or automatically most websites that create a persistent cookie, they set an expiry date which could be one month or two months from now or even longer. To demonstrate a quick example that shows you the difference between a session cookie and a persistent cookie, I like to show you the Gmail login screen. So, on the left hand side, I have entered my username and password, but I did not click on this stay signed in option. So, I do not want my username, password or my session to be activated or uh, stored on this computer. So, what happens is I, I log into my Gmail account and Gmail in this case will create a session cookie and store it on my computer. So, Gmail will remember who I am as long as this session cookie is valid which is as long as my browser is open. The moment I close my browser, the session cookie will get deleted. 
and Gmail will again ask me for my username and password if I close my browser and start it again. Because the moment I close my browser, my session cookie gets deleted. Google forgets who I am. And when I open the browser again and go to gmail.com, Google will ask me for a username and password. So that is, also, that is a great example of a session cookie. Similarly, there's something called a persistent cookie. So if I do the same thing, but this time I enable the stay signed in option, what will happen is Gmail will create a persistent cookie and store it on my computer. Which means that even if I shut down my machine, I close my browser, restart my machine or whatever, for the next several weeks, until this persistent cookie is manually deleted or it expires, which could be in several months from now or which could be never. Whenever I go to gmail.com, automatically I'll get logged into my Gmail account. So that is the main difference between persistent cookie and session cookie. By just enabling the stay signed in option, you're switching from a session cookie to a persistent cookie. So where are cookies stored? Like I had mentioned earlier, every browser stores the cookies of the user in spe special folders on that machine. So cookies are always stored on your computer in special folders. You can do a Google search to find out the exact location or on the screen I have displayed the exact location for every browser. Now web page can create a cookie on a user system using simple JavaScript or, or HTML or web programming code. The cookie is sent to the user system in the form of the following additional line that is added to the HTTP header. So, the cookie is sent using the HTTP header, which means that you can actually record somebody else's cookie information using a data sniffer. If a data sniffer is able to record somebody else's cookie, you can actually steal their cookie information as well. So, if you look at the screen, typically this is what a cookie will look like. It says set cookie followed by session ID is equal to something. It expires several years from now, six, seven years from now, uh, at this particular time, and it has been set by a domain, some website, which is website.com, right? So that is typically what the format of the cookie is. Now, how do you view the cookies on your computer? So I've already shown you manually how to view cookies in Google Chrome. Similarly, most of the browsers, if you go to the settings of your browser, they will allow you to view all the cookies that are stored on your computer. There's also a software called Karen's Cookie Viewer that allows you to not only the, uh, view all the cookies on your computer, it allows you to delete certain cookies from your computer and also view all the data values or query strings or session ID information or any data that has been stored in the cookies on your machine. So manually we had already seen a demonstration earlier. So I will not repeat this demonstration. Uh, you can view the cookies by going into the settings of your browser in Google Chrome, Firefox Mozilla, and also in Internet Explorer. Now, whenever you visit a particular web page, if you are curious to find out what are the cookies that that particular website or web page is creating or setting on your machine, all you got to do is right click on that page, click on view page info, and then click on show cookies and site data. So let me quickly demonstrate this to all of you. So let's assume that you have gone to timesofindia.com and you are very curious to find out what are the different cookies that are created by timesofindia.com on your computer. So you can right click on that uh, web page, click on view page info, and then all the cookies that are being created by that particular web page on your machine gets displayed. So you can click, click on show cookies and site data. It will show you more information about each cookie. So that is how you can see all the cookies that are set or created on your computer by a particular web page. How to protect yourself from cookies? So we have already discussed this. If you use a private browsing window in Mozilla Firefox or an incognito window in Google Chrome, then you can prevent a website any website from reading the cookies on your computer. 
But please remember a common misconception that people have is that if they use a private browsing window, then their IP address is protected.